Hello, it is I, Professor Herring, here to talk to you about revision. The greatest thing ever, ever. Yay! Woo! Revision. I love it. It's the best thing. It will make you the best writer. It's so exciting. Woo! Moving right along. All right. So, as I've said before, um, your first draft only had one job, and that job was to exist. Okay. All of you who turned in a first draft got all the points for the first draft. That's its only job. They serve as a doorway into the next version of your story. They are an absolutely necessary part of the process, and they are not the end of the process. Okay. I know um, it's really difficult, especially for newer writers, um, to, to really be willing to do an honest revision. You want to tinker, you want to just move some paragraphs around, you want to just change a couple names, do a, you know, just do really sort of superficial changes. And that's not really what I'm looking for here. That's not what I'm looking for here at all. I want to teach you guys and give you guys the space to do an honest revision, a rethinking, a re-seeing, a re-envisioning of what your story can be. It's not about the perfect story. It's about really understanding and experiencing the process. So here's what I'm really trying to teach you in my diabolical way. I'm trying to teach you, first of all, detachment from that draft. The more attached you are to every word you put on the page, the harder it's going to be for you to grow as a writer. I'm trying to teach you patience. Writing is a lifelong thing. Um, Things often come when you're waiting, when it seems like nothing's happening. You've shown up for your practice, nothing's really working, then there's a breakthrough. Well, the breakthrough wasn't just this aha moment. The breakthrough came as a result of your disciplined practice and your commitment to a project over a long period of time. I'm also trying to help you learn to work with the boredom factor that occurs for everybody who's serious about writing. Ask any writer, we will tell you, <clears throat> excuse me, there's a point when we hate our story or our novel or our nonfiction work. We don't want anything else to do with it. It's stupid. I'm bored with it. I've said all I want to say. Bleh. This is a normal, normal, normal part of the process, and you have to just get through it and get to the other side so that you can actually do then the next step for your work, so that you can do the best honor to your work, that you can respect the art and the craft that is writing, and that you can respect the story. Um, that has come to you, that you're trying to share and share with the world. Um, the boredom piece is a natural part of the process. And the way I have structured the deadlines and the way I have structured the way feedback comes back on these drafts and revisions has been to help create this container where you have to face some of these things that are going to happen to you when you're outside of a classroom situation and are trying to do um, the writer thing all on your own. I want you to have had some experience with it so you don't run from it, so you don't think it's something bigger than what it is. It's just another step in the process. And I'm also trying to help you get out of your own way by doing everything I possibly can to get you to try something different um, even if, especially if, it might be uncomfortable for you, trying to get you to experiment with um, some of the tools um, that we're learning in ways that you might not be uh, comfortable with or naturally inclined to do, because that is the only way that you're going to have a bigger toolbox. That's the only way you're going to be able to write bigger, better stories. If you only have one way of working with writing, you're only going to write one kind of story, and I know that you all can be better than that. And that's my job, to help you be better. Okay, so something that happens, especially if you're a first-time writer, um, is this loss of innocence moment that comes along. So here you are in your hero's journey as a writer. Doo -doo -doo, you have your horse, you have your knight, you have your fancy steed. Um, you're going to have a lot of loss of innocence moments along the way. Um, it's, it is also normal, um, part of the process once again. So when you have these moments, I want you to, to realize that they are just part of the path. So realizing and not being distraught by the fact that your early drafts are just a natural part of the process is one of those big loss of innocence moments. When you're like, oh my god, I thought I was done, and you really can realize without any attachment to it, oh my god, look at that great early draft I wrote. It got me where I needed to go. 
Okay, so early drafts are just a natural part of beginning. Every project begins. No matter how long you've been writing, no matter what genre you're writing in, every process, every project starts. And the journey from where it starts to the draft that you see published in the store is a whole lot of words and a whole lot of pages. Another loss of innocence moment is realizing and really realizing and being able to kind of laugh about it that you're not the one super special amazing writing on the planet for whom stories magically appear fully formed. You're not that person. I am not that person. No one is that person. So the sooner you can accept that you are not that person, it'll be awesome. You're like, yeah, I wrote a first draft. Woo! It is exactly what it is supposed to be. It is a first draft. So it's only after we lose our innocence that we can really make growth strides in our work as writers. I'm trying to help you in these very short 15 weeks um, become both artists and craftspeople. So the craft part is what's coming out of our writing fiction book and the conversations that y'all have been having over each other's drafts and over the stories in fiction gallery. And then the art is your unique way of working with those tools and putting them together. The unique things that each of you wants to say in your stories. I'm trying to help you do both. I'm trying to help you find greater ease with all of the parts of the writing process and not be so attached to a singular product. I'm trying to give you enough time and by building in so much time between receiving story feedback and turning in the next version is one of the ways I'm trying to do that so that you can truly step away from your work and make deep changes and integrations of new approaches into your next version. If you're only working toward a due date, you're not going to let yourself grow. I'm interested in you growing. I'm interested in you making mistakes. I'm interested in you learning from those mistakes. That's what artists do. That's what writers do. I'm not interested in you getting done. I'm interested in you growing. And so in order for that to happen, you have to be okay with trying things that don't always work. You have to be okay with experimentation and you have to be okay with trusting the story to take you places that you can't yet know are there for it. That's part of the magic of all this. I know that revision is super difficult for many people, especially if you're new to writing. Revising your work does not mean that you wrote it wrong. It's simply the next incarnation of your initial step. That first draft was that first step. Okay. So for those of you who are parents, when your child took that first step, and now maybe they're 20, 30, 40 years old, they're not the same person. They had to take that first step and go through many different journeys to get to where they are now. That's what writing does. Please be wildly curious about what your draft can become. Question it. What are you about? What character are you? What do you want? Why are you here? What are you doing in the story? Who are my antagonistic forces? What's opposing my protagonist? How's my protagonist changing? What is he or she risking? Try something and then try something again and then try something again. We learn best when things don't work. That is part of the process. So a class is a rare opportunity to really get into your art form and experiment. Release attachment to your drafts and see what can come next. It is worth this risk. Approach revision with a sense of play and lightness. Don't be contracted and tense. You're not trying to get something right. You're trying to experiment with your art. Okay, you're not trying to get something right. You're trying to experiment with your art. That is where the growth occurs. That is where learning occurs. So listen to your story. What is it telling you? What does it want to be next? What is it teaching you? So next steps are the revision assignment. Think of revision as a literal revisioning, a re-seeing and a reimagining of the current draft. Read through the feedback, including mine, and then make notes on what feels valuable to you. Say thank you for all of it, for everyone's time on your work, um, for everyone's consideration, and then let go of what you're not needing. It's no big deal. Then begin again. We have quite a few weeks before the revision assignment is due. 
I did that on purpose. I want you to have real time to stay with your work long enough for it to take you somewhere new. I want you to see where you can go and I want to give you enough time to work through those initial resistances that cause people to shut down and do what they've always done before and see what could be on the other side of them. The greatest gift that I can give you in a writing class is the opportunity to stay with the process long enough to see the other side. When you're no longer in a class, you may be tempted to ditch a draft too soon. You may be tempted to walk away when things aren't working. You may turn your back on your work. But here, at least for the 15 weeks that I have you, I can do my very best to create a container for you to really work with the writing process and your own responses to that process. We all relate differently to it. Writing itself is a great teacher. The revision assignment is not just fixing your commas and turning it in again, making superficial changes, you know, doing a real slapstick, I'm just going to incorporate one thing and move things around, and that's not it. I want you to really work it. Do something different and see what happens. So the revision assignment is your next level of experimentation, there's that word again, experimentation with your draft. You are enthusiastic, yay, opportunity to learn something new. So the assignment that you turn into me, your revision does not need to be a complete story. I'm looking at and measuring, okay, so even though everybody got all their points for the first draft, everyone's not going to get all their points for their revision. There's a rubric um, for you posted up in the class for how the revision is going to be assessed. But basically, if all you do is fix a couple commas, you're not going to do very well because that's not what I'm looking for. Okay? I'm looking for you to try something different. It doesn't have to work. It has to be a willingness on your part to risk and try something else. So some ways you could approach this, choose a single element that you want to focus on. Um, so maybe you want to work on a different point of view and see what happens to the story. Maybe you want to begin it in a different time or place. Um, maybe you want to work on creating just one single dramatic scene because you struggle with creating dramatic scenes. Many of you are challenged by creating scenes. Creating scenes are hard. Practice them. Try If you can make one solid dramatic scene with tension, with transformation, dude, you made you got it going on. There's nothing wrong with that. That's a next step. You can focus on character arcs and transformation. You can do any number of things. This revision is just the next step. Don't get hung up on it having to be. It won't. Perfect. This is a workshop. Your next draft is just one more learning tool. Use it to stretch yourself into a new area of craft. Use it to try something new with your draft. Use it to help you learn more about writing. That is what we're here for, and that's what I'm looking for in a next step. I want to see you grow. Whenever we grow, it's often not pretty. That's okay. It's the growth that you'll take with you, and that's the gift I want to give you. I want you to experience what it's like to take a risk. So how much are you willing to risk? Let's take a leap.